He's really been doing it all season long, but <coughs> what stood out to you about the way Nestor was thrown this afternoon? Uh, he was he, the strikeout ball right away. I mean, he, he was throwing his heater past people. You know, I think I think his pitch selection was really good. You know, it seemed like they looked cutter sometimes, and he was he was he was throwing the fastball. So I, you know, and vice versa. I thought uh, <coughs> I thought he and Higgy were on a really good page together, and I just thought he was really, you know, really efficient, and and stuff was coming out really good. He's finished the season with the best ERA for a Yankee starter since Ron Guidry in 1978. He had a huge ovation when he walked off the mound. Just what do you think that meant to him, and, and what has he meant to you guys throughout the course of the season? Yeah, I mean, he's been huge. Um, you know, I mean, he's – I know that – I understandably, the fan base loves him, you know, and – and he he loves he loves wearing the pinstripes and and playing here and pitching here and performing here. Um, it was a pretty neat ovation uh, that that he received when he came off. Uh, really to finish off what's been what's been a great uh, a great regular season for him. Where you know, as I said before the game, you know, one of those guys that's is really instrumental in us being in this situation right now. Who else? Dan and uh, is that why you uh, is that why you left him out there for the eighth, Nestor, to get that ovation, or was did you, or was that not it? Um, might have been. I uh, might have had something to do with it, but oh. I, but I wanted him to go out and get a hitter out. And with uh, with Judge, uh, were you at all surprised? You know that Baltimore being eliminated now, you know, didn't go after him more. Um, I, I think the one to lead off the whatever seventh inning there, um, yeah, a little surprised at that one. Otherwise, look, I, I think it's a hard situation to be in as a pitcher. You know, it's pr and it's probably very unique to be in a pitcher where you're striking that balance between I want to attack him, but it's the best hitter in the world, and my job is to get him out. Like. You know, I, I get the conflict there, and that that's probably a little bit weird for every pitcher. You know, and, and I think overall, what we've seen, you know, over the last couple of weeks is, for the most part, to varying degrees, guys have, you know, gone after them in, in spots. You know, leading off the inning there, I thought that was one where they might go after him a little bit more. It seemed like he he kind of ran from it a little bit, but um, I, I I totally respect the. That it's a it's a tough situation to be in, uh, you know, as an opponent. Pete, Aaron, uh, Cortez has remained so unpredictable uh, against hitters all season. Just how much of a of a weapon can that be in in postseason? You mean just pitch selection, or yeah, pitch selection, and, and even the you know the the different looks and angles yeah. he gives. Yeah, uh, y look, you know. I sometimes, you know, I, he he does the one funky wind up today, you know, one of ninety something pitches. Sometimes I think we focus on that too much and get away from just how really good of a pitcher he is. Um, that's certainly a part of what he does from time to time. I thought today using some different angles, right from Jump Street, where he was, he dropped down and used both his slider and his fastball. Um, he was really effective when he did kind of go to a you know, where he uses some deception. I thought he was really sharp when he did it today. Um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a weapon for him. But but the funky the funky ones that he pulls out every now and then, you know, I, I think sometimes we run a little bit too much to that being the story as opposed to a guy with really good stuff that's really on top of his game. Randy. Given that Nestor has been your most consistent starter this year and – Garrett has had some, some struggles of late. Is there a conversation possibly that could come whether Nestor could be your your game one starter for the playoffs? Uh, we'll we'll see we'll see when that comes. We're still trying to get through the regular season and and got to prepare for what opponent, you know. And ho hopefully we're we're going into different rounds and it doesn't always line up. So we'll have those conversations. I think Nestor is three and two thirds innings shy of qualifying for the ERA, uh, it sounds like you're saying that he's not going to start anymore. How we, if that's the case, how will you keep him sharp from uh, 
some live BPs or how would that work? Yeah, I mean, he'll have to throw live and, you know, we'll do some simulated stuff with him, um, you know, on those off days. Ron and Chris or Susan. Go ahead, Susan. How impressive is what Judge is doing with <laughs> discipline and never really going outside his plan? <laughs> it's been remarkable. It really has. Um, you know, it, yeah. I mean, it really, it's, you know, I, I know I've uttered this phrase before, but it's Mike Schmidt used to tell me when I was a kid, take what the game gives you. And, and, and Aaron does a great job of that. Um, you know, you, you can't go, you start chasing for it, you get yourself in trouble. And, and he knows that. So his job is to go up and have a plan and, and try to execute and control the strike zone, which he's done at such a special level with all this going around him. Ron and Chris. Is there any conscious discussion on the bench to take advantage when they pitch around them, putting him on base, leading off? He had a three run first when he got a hit, four runs when he walked in the seventh. I mean, yeah, we were pretty spirited there, and you know, in the seventh when he led off there, and we start putting together a rally. That's there's some gratification in that, you know, and I think the guys were kind of feeding off that, you know, um, lead off walk there. I think guys were feeling and wanting to make sure we cash those in, and. The baseball lifer in you, was there any feeling that it was sort of karma today, 61st anniversary, 61st homer? Um, I, no, I wasn't looking at it like that. Um, I mean, you know, there, there's part of me that is look, looking at it through a fan's eye, like wanting them to do it and, and all that, but I, I wasn't necessarily looking at it as, you know, anniversaries and things like that. Right behind you, Ron. <laughs> with all the attention that Judge has gotten this year, do you feel like in a way Nestor's season has been overshadowed a little bit? I don't think the legend of Nestor Cortez has been overshadowed at all. I think it's, you know, I think he is one of the stars of the of the All-Star game, one of the focal points of the All-Star game. I think he's as popular a figure, you know, as w within this fan base. Um, and I think this fan base certainly appreciates just what he's done for us the last really two seasons now and how good of a pitcher he's been for us. So, um, no, I don't think so at all. Laura. When, um, when Barry Bonds was going after his home run chase, he said that not getting a pitch to hit would sometimes wear him down during the game and over the co course of the season. Are you ever concerned that the same could happen to Judge, especially going into the playoffs? No. No. And, and – Look, the playoffs become a different animal altogether and a different scenario altogether. Um, no, I think he would have worn down a long time ago. And uh, so, no, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Meredith and Dan and Bob. Aaron, we've asked you over the past couple of days, if not weeks, about John Carlos Stanton and, and how he was looking at the plate. He absolutely demolished a ball in that first inning. When you see that, what does that tell you as far as the way he's starting to lock in? Definitely good to see. Um, you know, you know, I, I know he, you know, he, he wants to get some traction going here, heading into the postseason. Um, good to see him get a really good swing off to start off the day. I thought, I thought his actual, actually, his next at bat where he popped out to to shallow right field I thought he was on on time got the right swing off just missed missed the pitch a little bit so and then he threw another hit out there so you know hopefully these little things that start happening start moving him into a direction where look we've all seen him um you know against the best in 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 postseason situations when he's when it's locked in it's you know it's a different level so um keep working trying to get him there and hopefully today's a moving towards that aaron with a historic home run like judge is trying to hit would you like to see him hit it here you know as far as the last day would it mean something different if it was here well uh, yeah i mean i think there's <coughs> excuse me probably an added yeah something to do it in, in Yankee Stadium and the pinstripes, but that said, if he does it, period, 62 homers is going to be 62 homers. I mean, that's it'll be something you see for forever and ever. Um, and you know, and I'm worried about the weather now tomorrow too, so um, that could be an issue. 
Last one, Bob. <coughs> Aaron, you touched on this a second ago. Uh, you said the playoffs are a different animal. Um, given that there will be no home run record at stake, do you expect teams to go after, go right at Judge Moore in the in the playoffs than they are right now? You think he'll have more opportunities to do damage? Uh, not necessarily. I don't. I don't think. You know. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think people are not going after him to. You know, I, there's there's you can make a case over the last couple of weeks that there's been at bats where there's more of a case to go after him now, um, as opposed to the postseason. Um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be situations where the other team is probably not going to want him to beat them. Right. Um, but I don't, th I don't think all of a sudden the postseason comes and they start just challenging Aaron Judge left and right. You know, I think they're going to be careful regardless. Uh, in postseason, I, you know, you won't have the crowd booing the pitcher when he goes right one and zero. You know, yeah, I, I'm I sure mean, that's rattled some of the pitchers judges' face. I do, I do think that has some of the pitch like like what I said at the start here. Like I think it is a. I'm respectful of of the unique nature of it. That's got to be a little weird for a pitcher where you're, you know, in a position where, well, I got to go after him here, but I got to get him out too. Uh, you know, it's it's probably a weird predicament to be in for a pitcher right now. Thank you, Ryan.